Hello comrades. Today a treat is special. It is not cooking video. It is guitar modification video. Not many people know I do guitar modifications, but I do do guitar modifications. For like 20 years I specialize in the electrical. I rewire guitars, change pickups, do things like that. You give me a super switch, I show you how many tones you can get. Very many different tones. Very, very, very many different tones. In today's episode, I have to uh, go ahead and install a sound hole pickup onto this 12-string uh, acoustic. I've uh, never really worked on acoustic before because Grandpa's guitars don't have electronics usually. But in this case, he wants electronic on Grandpa's guitar. Right now, I just loosen up strings so I can get into the hole. You got to loosen them up a little bit first before you, they let you in the hole. You know what I'm saying, comrades. And even them comrade it's <laughs> Right, right, right. So here hoping that if I loosen this up enough, I can get the strings out of the little peggies here. Peggy 18. And then I can get into the hole without having to take strings off the pegs. I like to dismantle the bridge if I can. In fact, you give me a Floyd Rose, I'm telling you, I can I can change the pickups on a Floyd Rose, assuming it's a healthy Floyd Rose that's set up properly. I can change the pickups on that Paparino without even having it go out of tune. Floyd Roses are great. They're my favorite. Pain in the ass to set up, but <clears throat> in their defense, once you get them set up, chances are you don't have to fuck with them much after that. All right, let's see if this trick's gonna work or if I'm making a horrible mistake. Now mind you, I kind of want to hold these strings down first so that they don't explode everywhere and come loose all over the place. I don't know if this is gonna be a very good idea, but we're gonna try it anyway. Might need a little bit, uh, eh, yeah, that should do the deal. That should do the deal. Now I gotta get these fucking things out of here, bud. Look at these little knob ends. This little knob ends. Need some sort of special pulling device, I'm not sure. They're supposed to just slip out. Oh, look at that. They just slip out. Still a little bit difficult. They've probably been in there a while. Wait. I might have some special tool that will assist me. Or do I? Let's see. A buddy gave me this because his buddy accidentally ordered 250,000 of them. And, okay, yeah, it's just the droid we might be looking for. Try not to scratch shit up, bud. That wouldn't be very nice of you. My guitars have so many war wounds, I don't even care if I get them a little scratch anymore. But this is not my guitar. And those war wounds did not happen from me working on it. Well, some might have. Back in the day, I modified my guitar so often, it was like, <laughs> you know, wear the damn thing out just working on it instead of playing it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta be careful. Some components, they're not designed to be worked and reworked and worked and reworked and worked and reworked. Put yourself into a position where you can start burning out pots. I'll tell you, man, never been much of a pothead. 
I've burned a lot of pot in my life, but not the smoky kind. The oh shit. My 30 second pickup swap wore out my component tree. Oh, and here I was hoping I got everything I needed ready for this uh, this uh, situation. And uh, well, I need my Dunlop, my Dunlop 65 from the other room so I can polish this up a bit. Ah, well, we'll do that after we start uh, freaking fixing on her. Now, the idea is <clears throat> he has a sound hole pickup that plugs right into the amp, right? He doesn't want it to plug right into the amp. He wants a nice, you know, he wants to be able to stick it in its ass like every other acoustic guitar. So we got one of these, these fancy jacks. Oh yeah. And it goes in the bottom there like that. Now these might be tricky to install, but you know what? I don't think it's going to be too bad. A little bit of sorting out to do just a little bit. And you have the strap end. Hmm. See, we discussed the idea of putting it um, somewhere else, not right in the hind. However, the catch with doing that is uh, you might compromise. You might not have enough structure, right? You might just like, you know, you accidentally pull on that jack wrong or bang into it and then boom, you'll just rip a hole in the guitar. To top it all off, these, these bends, you know, they're not necessarily load bearing. There's a possibility you put a hole in there and you fuck with the strength of the build overall. So the ideal situation is to get this right through the center. We just have to make sure there's enough meat down there first. Now, fortunately I have one of these, uh, snaky snaky on the back cams. Allows me to get a look in there, except I forget that the light on the end of that tunnel is absolute garbage. So we're going to go ahead and intentionally drop a flashlight in there. And then, oh yeah, now we can see. I'm not going to bother showing you what we have here to work with because uh, I have a hard enough time getting this thing to show me what I want to see in general. Not even sure what's up or down. But yeah, looking at the inside ass end of this guitar, there's a nice chunk of wood going right down the center. That's going to be a nice platform to go right through there. Hey, this is going to get in my way over there. So now we got to determine how we want to mount this paparino. So ideally, you know, because it goes in many different ways. They kind of thought about that. You got this scoop on the back. You got all these nuts. Uh, those nuts don't need to come off because chances are we're going in from the inside. Right? And then you can see there's nothing really stopping us from going this way other than the nuts on the back. So once we get in there, we put this sub nut on and then... Uh, yeah, that should stay right in place like that. We're going to have to do some measurement. Oh, geez, I'm going to kill my wire. We need to do some measurements first, though. Now, uh, there's a possibility I can repurpose the wire that I cut off here. So, as much as I would like to measure it a certain way. I want to preserve as much of this as we can. So let's see now, how's this go in there? Right at the top like this, just clampy clampy. I see there's some screws. Never actually worked with one of these things before. I have not done any work with Grandpa's guitars. As new as this is to me, I am not too worried because I do believe I have adequate experience to do this correctly. So yes, I assume this goes up here, like this. It's not even assumption. It is a hypothesis. It is an educated guess. You're extrapolating from missing data. And then that's got to go like that. And he was hoping, ideally, that we could secure this wire somehow a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, 
along the side, like that, like that. Ah, man, that's too long. We can get that all through in there. So, like, ideally, you know, if we could just get just the right amount here, just the right amount, something like that. Even that feels like it could be a bit too long. Less is more, right? Or more is less. How's that go again? You can always cut off more, but adding more back on is, I digress. Now, do we even need this choke sleeve? It seems to offer nothing to the situation. Well, maybe a little bit of stress relief. Well, well. Oh, WSP, what's up? All right. You guys probably have no idea what the fuck is going on right now. I'm just randomly saying words in hopes that you're bother following this. Oh, I've committed now, bud. I've committed. All I wanted was a Pepsi. All right. So now one of the next steps of the operation is I need to get this onto this, this onto this. Oh yeah. So now what's this is? Now what? Well, I tell you now what? We need to turn on soldering iron, get it warmed up, and then we need to do some tests. You see this jack has many connections on it. I have to figure out what connection is what. The box did not come with manual. It was just, oh, here is Jack. Have fun. Oh, that's a tight hole, bud. Ooh, ooh buddy's going to like this. So we have to get out our multimeter. I can't afford a real fluke, so I have a vintage fluke. Still works well. Now it's going to need this lead. Not going to need this lead. All right, let's do some ohm tests here, bud. Some ohm tests. All right, so we go there. We see zero. We know it's working. Now let's find the ground prong. It's probably this one, right? Oh, it's definitely that one. How about one of these other ones? Not that one. <gasps> I'm getting ground off that. I'm getting ground off that too. Ooh, that's a red flag. Now, does that have something to do with the switching mechanism? No ground, no ground, no ground. That's, ah, fister in there. Okay, 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 okay. Well, how many damn ground connections are you giving us, bud? This thing's a bit of an enigma. So what, this little guy down here is positive? Well, of course they gotta make the positive connection the one that's the hardest to get at. What a bunch of scraling railings, right? <sighs> Tuck and hide it down there, right, bud? Tuck and hide it. Well, we don't particularly need to worry about most of these connections because it's just a basic mono connection. It's not an active pickup, so we don't have to worry about any switching functions. Still, I'd like to know what all those damn it other prongs are all about. It looks funny in there, man. It almost doesn't make sense the way this is lined up internally. I'm guessing one of those connections is ring. I'm guessing what we have here is we have tip ring sleeve. 
all combined together and the ground is something separate even though it's technically going to be combined with everything else i would need a, a trs jack to know for sure i'm not sure i have one on hand but again it doesn't really matter we just have to make this thing work and at this point we have a general good idea well no i'm gonna have to do some further probing here because if one of these prongs is intended to be a ground i am gonna consider jumping it is that even worth the trouble okay well i need to pause this to make a couple decisions on how i'm gonna proceed where the fuck's my remote, bud? It's hiding all the way over there. How'd it get all the way over there? All right, after much deliberation and consulting with the Grand Council, I have come to some sort of determination on the what is the what here. The what is the what. And there is not really any washers or pieces that I need to worry about getting on there. Yes, that is something you have to watch out for. One of the most common noob mistakes is stuff that has to slip on the wire before you solder them down. And then you end up forgetting that. And then you're like, oh shit, that's no good at all. That, that's just, that's just not going to do. 20 years, I still make that mistake once in a while. Okay, so, uh, you know, the length here is always tricky because you need a little bit of insulation to go under the, uh, the little uh, squeezy bit there. That holds the wire into place. Stops it from fucking off on you. Otherwise, you're just hanging on with the connections. You got to carefully trim this down. These are specialty electrical tech scissors. I will give you mad shit if you sneak into my shit and I find you chopping weed with them. They're kind of like my sewing scissors. <laughs> they are for one purpose. You do not use them for any other purpose other than that. So that has to go like in there and we have hook there and it has to come around to here I don't know if I want to ground out tip or no ring. Do I want to ground out ring? I have to admit, not many people come for fixing these days and uh, probably should ground out ring, yes. Well, no, ring will ground out when proper jig is put in. And if stereo jig is put in there, oh, no, hmm. I was thinking about provisions. If someone plugs some sort of stereo sound signal in there, they can get uh, both left and right. But it just doesn't work that way in guitar. There's no advantage to doing that. Especially if you did rig it up that way, and someone plugged in a mono jack, it would just mute out the main signal. So, screw that ass, sir. Screw that ass. Now, because these freaking dill holes hide the positive connection so deep in there, I am in a position where it is hard to get at and I have to connect it first. So I have to bend these puppers out of the way and hope they don't break. But then at the same time, if they do, it doesn't matter because we can get a main ground connection at the bottom. And then we have to figure out the length of this wire to strip it back. It's going to be right about there. And this, I do have a tool that strips tiny wires a little bit better. Oh, ho, ho. it throws me. It is double insulated. I strip off insulation. There's more insulation. It is, oh, this cable is like Russian nesting cable. Yes. Russian. Oh, and this insulation's a pain in the ass. It won't bite off easy. So now I have to carefully use my surgical skills 
to circumcise this wire. Just appropriate. Oh boy. Oh boy. One wrong move. And this is the other disadvantage of cutting the wire the right length the first time. <laughs> if I fuck up stripping this and I have to get more, <laughs> I might lose my length. All right. Now what I want to do here now is carefully just put a little tinning on these ends. Where the fuck's my spool of solder? It's hiding at the other bench. You know, just kind of like burning the end of a shoelace. So they just slightly are easier to get into the holes you want to get them in. Yeah. I don't want to get that in through that. Oh, geez. Want to get that in through that hole there? Ah, it's surgical, bud. I gotta bust out the tweezies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like that. All right. Oh, I might actually go and wrap that around. Wrap that around. Look at that. I'd like to be able to show you close-ups of what I'm doing right now so you could admire my skill. But I'm sorry, we just don't have the fucking budget for that many camera angles. Nor the staff to edit that many camera angles after. And that's the ironic thing about the interest in becoming a YouTuber is this is actually pretty hard work. A lot of hours, a lot of hours. You know, I won't necessarily have time to enjoy my favorite online content if I was super busy creating the online content. So, now I'm going to secure the choke. Now the problem, oh geez. I was going to heat shrink that. Remember what I told you about noob mistakes? I was going to put a little bit of heat shrink over that to seal it into place. Well... We don't really need that level. Oh, geez, my microphone's running away. Oh, great. It's probably spiking and crapping out on me. We don't need that level of strain relief. Now, the other thing you have to watch out with is now that that strain relief is in place, once you go to solder the ground wire, it can burn off the insulation. But I do want to put some solder on this ground connection. That will do nicely. And now we will put some solder on the positive connection. That too shall pass inspection. Now. This last and final negative wire, I'm going to bridge it over to the actual negative pin connection. Ups a daisy. Our cable is frazy. Push that down into place. Bring it around. And secure it with the solders. All right, the connection is made. <sighs> Go on there, trim out the excess. <sighs> Bring the tip down. Gotta watch out for that tip now, because if it touches anything, it shouldn't. And uh, then we have something like uh, this to go on there. Just to say, right? Just to say. I should probably go plug this into an amplifier to double check that this pickup's gonna work. 
But in order to do that, I have to dismantle all these tethers that I have. So I'm going to have to um, do that off camera and get back to you. All right. I'm wearing PJ pants today, which is not as tasteful looking as I would like it to be. But after much deliberation and consultation with the council, we have determined after a visit to the amp room that this will indeed click and pop and pick up in all the ways appropriate that it should click and pop and pick up and it's a pick up and it's picking up bud enough said now the problem is we need to ream this asshole so as i can get this through there all right gotta loosen things up a bit you know just kind of have to <laughs> that's too tight of a hole gotta figure that out so ultra special measuring tools we have our caliper and it is blinking to let us know that the batteries are low which is freaking annoying i swear i'm forever changing batteries in this thing <sighs> Four, six, three. Ah, fuck that. I'm Canadian, bud. All right. That's 11.7 millimeters. So we need to put a 12 millimeter hole through here. That's going to be roughly a half an inch. Half an inch is 12 point something. We have to be careful because these, um, some of the washers that they give us to work with this aren't exactly... Eh, big enough. We don't want that hole to be much bigger than it already is. So, some of y'all out there is be like, oh, yeah, it's fucking this size, that size, and whatever. I need to go to the drill bit repository because it looks like we will be using standard drill bit to do this. And I am not sure how good this framing is. Because you're going to be seeing the work I do from the wrong angle. 11.36. And that is a 29.64 drill bit. What's this guy here? Oh, this is 12.5, but this is a half inch drill bit here. Now, if we do make a half inch hole, how well are these washers? I'm going to support that hole. I guess they won't be too bad. I guess they won't be too bad. I wonder if I have some larger washers in inventory that have something stupid like a half inch hole. Actually, it's very possible. It's very possible because, uh, or actually no. Well, I don't know. I'll have to look. But either way, this appears to be about the right size hole I'm going to need. So, I'm a bit nervous drilling into this thing. Not going to lie. I wish there was some form of sideways drill press I could use to do this super accurately. Fortunately, we do have a very good pilot hole already drilled in there. All right. Now, I must think for a moment. Go over the mental checklist before I permanently fuck up this guitar's asshole for the rest of its life. I have to make sure I have thought of the things that I need to think of. It is straightforward. We put hole through. There is wood. Ah, I can't reach all the way. Well, that is no good. You have to make sure it goes in straight. And that is about it. Alright. 
stuff is going to get noisy because I have certain mass evasion techniques. I wish I could clamp this down. Ah, it goes well, sir. It goes well. Now the only problem is we might have some wood chips inside that uh, quite possibly we are not going to be able to get out very easy. You know what it is like when you drop pick into guitar? <laughs> well I imagine wood chips would be even the more difficult. Let's see how it fits the hole. Oh fits hole nice. Okay let's use washer to see how much security place we have. Oh, I think it's going to be good, sir. I think it's going to be good. I would like to find slightly larger washer in inventory if I have it for the inside. But otherwise, I think it is going to be good. All right, indeed, we were able to find a nice, thicky half-inch washer here. That will be nice for the inside of the hole. Or as Mr. Sir, who owns this guitar, calls it a plate. We have to do measurements now because you see we're not going to be able to tighten it from the outside or the inside we are have to tighten it from the outside so the inside washer assembly has to be spaced and arranged in such a way that it's just going to poke out the asshole here just far enough that we can tighten her down proper in order to do that we need to figure out a way to measure this figure out how deep that hole is. I can try doing it this way. Need more light. Oh jeez. Come on now. Get it get it'd be nice if I could bottom out. It'd be nice if I could get my hand in there to bottom it out. I wonder if I have some sort of... Oh, hey, this might work. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is actually... Um, <laughs> that's a buffer from an AR-15. If I can kind of put it up against that hole. No, I can't. Need something. Longer, bud. Hmm. Oh, maybe the arse end of a screwdriver. I can even get that screwdriver through the hole. Yeah, there we go. Then. Bump, bump, bumping around. All right. Now I've blocked the hole. Now I'm going to do my depth measurement. Come on now. And we have 22 millimeters, 22.09 to be exact. But, all right, so we're gonna lock this into place. All right, turn it off because we don't need it anymore. And now we can go like this and we can adjust this nut down. Or actually we gotta get the, all the rest of our nuts in place. Gotta get all your nuts in a row like a good chipmunk. And then determine our total overall depth right about there. Right about there. We want a little bit less so that we will get tension. 
And then the nice thing is we have this sleeve on the back that once we tighten that up, that's going to lock everything into place, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere now. So now we have to get it through this hole. So how we do that is we are going to take the wire that we cut off the end. We're going to put it through the hole. All right. Then we're going to plug it in. And then we can use that now to fish it back out. Just like that. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. We need to adjust it. Hey, you know what? This is maybe an easier way of doing it than all that measurement tomfoolery. <laughs> Just a little bit of the old in and out <laughs> can solve some problems for you sometimes, you know? Bring it in a bit. <sighs> Tighten that now. <sighs> yeah. Now let's fish it back through. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit more. Yeah, you guys can't see what the fuck I'm doing, can you? All right, let's move this damn it camera. Yeah, I should have went with an angle like this the whole time. <laughs> an angle similarian to this. Similar, similar lions. Uh, the similar lions. Uh, lesser known token tome. Okay, let's try that. Pull it, pull it through. Oh yeah, that looks just about right there, bud. Looks just about right, right there. All right, and I can kind of. Right. Vaguely, vaguely. You know, you kind of wish, maybe. Not that bad though. All right, sneak that on there. See if we can get the correct tension without it twisting out. It's spinning on the inside. Of course, the guy who works on guitars 20 years is specialty tool for Jack. Oh, it's just turning. It's just turning, bud. Oh, boy. Okay, we need to stop this thing from turning. Well, that's gonna be hard. Oh, hold on. Got it, oh, nope, almost. Uh, side tension, I don't wanna put side tension on it. Okay. So it's just kinda spinning in on itself over there. There's a possibility that uh, it's tight enough. Ah, you know what? A little bit of impact might get the results that we need. Do I really, 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 really want to brute force it like that? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe if I just get this plier in here and I find it and grip on maybe um no i'm not gripping on to anything there that's important uh, maybe i should have <laughs> where's your snake oh geez that was too soft i was gonna kill a wire right there it's hard to look professional when you're fishing around Okay, so I've gotten it tightened up another tier, but still not as much as I would want. So we are going to consider giving it some brute force. <laughs> Here I am talking louder because I went farther away from the camera, forgetting completely that that is not necessary because I have a lav mic. Right, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's go do this, bud. A little bit of brute force. 
But not a lot of brute force, just a little bit of brute force. But not a lot of brute force. <gasps> oh, you damn it. It's the wrong size. There we go. That uh, hammering effect of the impact tends to force things to tighten and loosen that other mice might just spin out on you. All right. So now we just have little waggle Mr. Snaggletooth just kind of banging around in there. And we will have to figure out Oh wait, we forgot to put in the crystals. The little, the little final, just a little off the top there. And now we have a strapper, a strapping young lad. Now he asked if it was possible to tape down this wire, which I guess it is. Just maybe a bit of a in the air. So, well, let's just hammer it in there and see what it's like. Right. So that's 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 going to be tricky because like you need. You need little woman hands to get in there and actually tape that down. And then what tape would I use? I am not a fan of adhesives because adhesives tend to disappoint. Uh, the most favorite adhesive that I have is hockey tape. Ah, we might do a bit of Canadian. Now, tape is a relatively non-permanent solution, so really, I should tilt the camera up so you can get a better, a better, a better visual of me fisting this thing. Tape is a non-permanent solution. So if he doesn't like the tape job, he is welcome to make corrections. I'll just pull that thing up and pin her down. fingers so this isn't as hard for me as you might expect except for the fact that it's stuck to my finger and won't come off usually when I use adhesives I will do some prep involving alcohol you know get really drunk before you stick things on and no 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 surface prep bud surface prep uh, so maybe one more once more on the wall right there that should do her <laughs> hockey tape just to hold her down a little bit you know this one's tricky because we're running out of slack, so we gotta kinda pre-line things up before we paste her down. Right there like that. All right, so now that wire isn't gonna 
flip around as much as maybe we want or don't want it to. So I secure Mr. Fishman. I'm assuming it goes on the top here. Not like he's going to have trouble flipping around. There will be just enough slick for him to flip it around. All right. We have secured Mr. Fishman. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So now part of the procedure is going to be before I put these strings on, bring it back to the amp, plug it in once again to make sure everything's still working the way it should. Because we'd be damn disappointed to get this all put and up, get, 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 get but, but buttoned up, and then find out it's not working because you fucked up a wire or something. Uh, it sucks having to do stuff twice, but at least there's less to do twice. So, all right, we have visited the guitar amplifier once again and determined that it indeed is still working. Now, these inaccessible areas, we were all rubbed down with a little bit of guitar cleaner. He can clean the rest on his own time. But these slightly inaccessible areas, we will give them a little wipe down. And now we have to start, try, put strings back into place. Must put strings back into place. And this will be the shittiest, most time-consuming part of the process because as you can see, they get a little bit, uh, a little bit into a twist here, right? This is not fun already. Got to find the right peg that fits. This is just loose hole right here. I think this is just loose hole. This hole is she is loose. Oh boy. Oh. If she was one, I have to kick out of bed. Oh no, that is a mean joke. I should not say things like that. This is so annoying. You bastard, you come loose. It is like knot that ties itself tighter. And there is no relief just when you think you get it free. It is like, sorry, sir, I tangle up again and get even more tighter on you. <sighs> it's the little strings too. The little strings are the worst. And there's so many of them. There are 12 of them. Ah! This one is really being a nuisance. It's like I'm four of 12 in and this one is just fucking jammed up in there.
Holy fuck, that took too much effort. Oh, hey, but the next one is ready to go. I guess that's karma for you. All right, strings are back into place after many minutes of boring footage that I will have to uh, make adjustments to. And I will admit, I have never tuned 12 string guitar before. This will be a little bit of learning. I always found it trippy how they secure the strings on, on, on acoustics with just these little weird pins. It doesn't seem intuitively secure, but I guess it works for much of the history of humanity. So I have to go figure this out now and uh, maybe test on it and then, to, well, I'm going to get back to you. All right, so I'm not using normal microphones, so you can hear the moments of the truth. Eh, I can see meter. Yeah, you should be able to hear. All right, so moment of truth number one. Let's get strap on there. Oh, oh. Oh. Will it work with this strap? Maybe not so much. Uh, how's this strap even work right now? This is pain inertion. Well, it is a strap lock hole thing. Hey, I don't think it's compatible with this strap. No, it's not compatible with this strap. We find other strap. Alright, I got it to work with this strap here. Grandpa's guitars are so awkward. I do not like the way they feel. So, uh, I plug it in now. Ah, you are not here for moment of truth number one. And in moment of truth number one, I confirm it worked because I able to tune guitar using built-in pickup. Now we shall hear how maybe it sound by plugging through uh, the amplifier. But the amplifier is bass amplifier, but it should still do the job within reason.
I play nothing. I cannot impress with riffs like this. I am not even used to playing guitar. I am used to playing bass. This feels tiny to me. Feels like tiny to me. And then it's even more tiny because it has more little tiny strings everywhere. It's like how do I how do I hit these? I got crap sticking to my fingers. <laughs> I do not know proper chords and I am not here to impress you with my playing. I show you, it works now! This has been success, and my name has been irrelevant, and we are finished now. This is not a comedy video. But it is maybe interesting to some peoples. Goodbye.